Have you ever had a competition that you've been preparing for for many, many months? The competition is very important to you. You want to perform well. And then when the day comes and you leave your starting boxes, you grab the map, you go into the forest, you try to do your best, and it all falls into pieces like a house of cards. It flops, it fails. And sometimes you don't even know the reason because you have been training for it, you have been preparing for it, you have been focused mentally, it still fails. Has it ever happened to you? I know it's happened to me, and I know it has happened to many of the youngsters and youth that I've been training with, and I'm sure it's the same for almost everybody. Of course, the scale of it can be different for depending on what are your ambitions, I guess. But I'm pretty sure that this is the trap that almost everybody falls into. And that's exactly what I want to talk about today. How to avoid this. So there are many layers to this and we are not going to talk about all of them today because the video would be very, very long. But I want to focus about, uh, I want to focus on two things today only. So I could talk about stress and how to avoid stress and we will talk about this a little bit. It will be one of the methods, uh, but of course we can do so much more around that area. Uh, what I want to focus on though is something a little bit different. So to take you into my way of thinking about this, I want to give you an example, an example from the military. When you have an elite group of soldiers that you know that, the, that when they go into the battlefield, it's going to be a mayhem around them. The conditions are going to be extreme. They will be under super hard pressure. Um, the, their lives are on the line. The lives of their, of their colleagues are on the line and maybe also the people that they are trying to save. Basically, these are probably one of the worst conditions you can find yourself in. And still, their job is to perform well, as well as possible, in those conditions. How do they prepare for this? This is an important question. So, of course, everybody knows that military is all about training. You spend really not too much time really fighting um, whoever, but you spend a lot of time training for it. Why? Well, because if you want to perform in very harsh conditions, you need to be in such harsh conditions earlier several times, multiple times, so that your mind and your body can get used to this, right? It all makes sense. If you repeat something over and over and over and over again, human is a very amazing machine, quotes, right? So it can adapt to so many different circumstances, also the extreme ones. All you need is to get into uh, the, this, this dip of whatever you're training for as many times as needed. So if soldiers are doing this, can we do it as orienteers? Yeah, of course, I'm not trying to compare orienteering to military fights. Of course, <laughs> orienteering is not that extreme, but still, if you're thinking about a certain competition, it's super important to you, and you know that it's been months and months of trainings, um, hours spent running through the forest, through, through paths and roads, uh, lots of sweat that has been uh, that has been produced during all of that, or maybe some tears also, then you really, really, really don't want to waste this opportunity, right? And the question now is, how often do you put yourself in a similar situation so that now, when the time comes, your body knows exactly what to do and how to behave and how to take things calmly and make the best possible rational decisions that are needed to obtain the goal that you're aiming for. How often? 
Yeah, so this is basically a problem that many athletes are facing in our world. And it's not a problem that I have discovered. It's, it has been known for a long time. Um, among juniors, this is why, for example, we have Junior European Cup, why we, ha why we have Baltic Junior Cup, right? The, we wanted to create opportunities for the youth to compete on the high level so that they can get used to such competition pressure and they, they can perform better when they get to the, um, the, their goal, the, the, their end point competition, right? So what I'm suggesting is that maybe it makes sense to try and put yourself into such conditions as many times as possible. Now, does that mean that you have to go and run in major competitions all around the world? I would say that it's not a requirement. It helps, but it's not a requirement. So what I want to suggest is that going to such a competition, it's not the, the, the perfect solution because a lot of what's going to happen during that competition is actually over here in your head. Because even if you go to, let's say, Baltic Junior Cup, right? But you still treat these races as something that is, you know, Baltic Junior Cup is in November. It's almost the end of the season for everyone. Um, most of the youth are, are, are aware that they are not really fighting for anything that is going to be a major achievement. So if they treat these races as something that doesn't put pressure on them, the opportunity is wasted, to be honest. So to actually use this opportunity, what needs to be done is that they have to believe that this is the place where they have to go hard and they have to achieve a perfect race. And this has to be their goal. Now, another question is, can you do the same thing for any other competition? I would say that yes, it is possible. And I think that taking as many opportunities as you can during your preparation season to prepare yourself, both mentally and physically, of course, for the end challenge is a requirement. So what you should be doing is even on the competitions that are not really important to you, maybe they are just your training sessions, but you're running them with the starting speed, raise the bar for those competitions. Try to perform the best that you can during those competitions. But that's not all. If you want to really raise the bar in your head, not just think, okay, I'm going to push hard over here. No, that's not enough. So you need to do, you need to take an extra, extra, extra step, you know? So we, we have this funny mechanism, which I, I hear very often from my colleagues and other athletes, where we go uh, to the event center before the competition and, you know, we mingle, we talk, uh, we um, exchange some pleasantry, pleasantries and, and we ask one another very often, how are you doing? How is your form? How is your training? Are, are, you, are, are you well? Have you been training hard for this? You know, how, how are your preparations for this season? And very often the, the answer that you will hear back is, oh, you know, I've had my share of problems, this and that and that, right? So we are trying to lower the expectations, right? I'm sure it has happened to most of you. We are trying to lower the expectations so that when we fail, we have an excuse. When we win, you know, it's always something to be happy about. So no harm done. What you want to be doing is you want to be raising the bar, not lowering it. So what you want to say is, you know, I've had my share of problems, but I'm going to win with you today. That is my goal, right? I, I know it's intimidating and many people will be shy of doing that, but if you really want to put your mind into getting the best possible result under at least a little bit of pressure, you have to raise the bar somehow, right? So 
that could be one of the things that you that, that you can do while you're talking to people try to say that you're you're in a good form you're going to perform today you're going to be uh, the, the, the champion here you're going to have the ra the best possible race <laughs> as my friends from Sweden uh, taught me to say your strategy for today is going to be full speed no mistakes right so uh, are there any other methods of raising the bar yeah I mean um, you could for example uh, make a bet with someone and say look I need some additional motivation for today so if I win or sorry, if I lose actually, I'm going to. And here can go anything that hurts, right? So it doesn't have to be money. It can be something that you will have to do. It can be something that you will have to part with. It can be something that you will resign from, you, you, you will uh, avoid for a while. But if you, if you feel that money motivates you and you have money to spare, then it can also be money, right? Another thing, that you can do is you can pick a goal for yourself, right? Don't just run and, you know, what happens, happens. If I perform well, fine. If I perform bad, well, I will try to learn from my mistakes. No, pick a real goal. So, for example, the one that I like is you look at the start lists and you're looking for someone or multiple someones that are, who, who are going to be a challenge, who you know that normally you shouldn't be able to beat but today you will try hard to do that and then these people or this person that is your goal you want to win with them another method is that you can aim for a specific time that is a little bit more difficult because you need to be quite familiar with the specifics of the terrain and the pace that you can achieve in such a terrain. So, you know, sometimes it's hard to say whether you're going to be uh, running full speed through the forest because it's a white forest mostly, uh, or maybe, you know, sometimes even the light green forest can be less or more challenging to run through. So it's hard to gauge. And I would say that actually picking the person from the, uh, from the start list is a little bit better. But if you don't know anybody, or maybe you don't want to do that, Here's another option, right? So try to create a challenge for yourself anytime that uh, you go to a competition and you're going or you're planning to run with the race speed. This way you will put yourself, your mind and body as many times as possible into those more demanding situations that will teach you how to deal with these situations, with stress, and of course you will be able to learn from each and every one of these races a lot more than uh, compared to, to, to the races where you just go and try to have a, a good run, right? I hope you know what I mean. Now, another thing I want to mention that is strictly connected with this is that th there are also patterns or triggers in our life that make us put us into a certain mode so if i try to think about some examples of this i would say that for example if you if you're if you're a man if you, and you're watching advertisements tv especially probably when you see a football match you might have a craving for a beer this is how we are conditioned by the commercials um, there, there are, you, you might also have other triggers, for example, for having a coffee, for example, for having something sweet to eat, right? There can be multiple examples. I want to say that we want to create a similar trigger or a set of triggers that will help you get into the mood and feeling of having a really tough competition right ahead of you, right? So what I mean by this is that you have to bring yourself to create a starting routine. We were talking about warm-ups in a previous video and I think that having a routine during your warm-up is a very good trigger to get you into the starting mood, right? To get you into the racing mood and I've mentioned what is mine, right? M mine usually starts 
a few minutes before the boxes, right? Of course, I'm doing some runs, some stretching, uh, some waving my arms and legs this way and that way, but that's not part of my routine yet, although I tend to do it quite repetitively. But the routine starts right before I get into the boxes. This is the starting boxes. This is where I check the north. This is where I check my surrounding. This is where, where, where I focus about what I'm just going to, to do um, inside those boxes. Uh, that I'm going to look at the controls and then I do it, uh, control descriptions I mean, that I'm going to do the visualization in the last box, right? And this is part of my routine, <clears throat> or even whole routine, right? That puts me into the racing mode. I know that when I'm doing the visualization the 30 last seconds before the start, I know that this is serious, right? I, and I know that I'm going to try my very, very best. And I strongly advise you to create your own routine so that you can repeat it every time and it will serve two purposes. So first of all, it will get you into the right mindset. Second of all, it will help you remain calm because you will be repeating the things that you've already done tens of times, maybe hundreds of times, and you will feel like this is normal. Whatever the level of the competition is that you're at, this is normal. You've been doing it before every race. So your body and your mind are used to it. So that's the goal of creating such a routine. And every routine can then be transformed into a habit. And for those of you that know the power of habits, you know that it's totally worth it. And we will probably talk about habits in one of the videos in the future. Now, the last thing that I want to mention in terms of what can be done is that those, the, those test races, that's how I will call them, uh, that, that you're trying to perform your very best, they are always also a perfect opportunity to test things out, right? So we know that during uh, the final start, you don't want to be experimenting, but during those test races, yes, you can. And this is exactly what they are for. So if you want to test a new breakfast, for example, before the race, do it. If you want to change a little bit of the timing when you eat what you eat, right, do it. If you want to check, for example, how your body reacts to taking a gel during the race, do it. If you want to drink more or less water during the race, do it. If you want to um, moderate the, the pace of your race differently, do it, right? This is where the experiments need to happen. And one last thing that I want to say regarding that is that doing those experiments is absolutely fine. It's actually um, recommended, but do not test several things at the same time because then it will be hard to figure out whether the effect was uh, coming from this one change or multiple changes and then it's hard to grasp which change was actually good and which one was bad. So one thing at a time, I think it's a reasonable advice for me to give you. So um, I think that everything we've talked in this video, so creating uh, a routine, having habits, testing things out, but mostly also figuring out how to put a little bit more pressure on you while doing some normal local races that you're running with the race speed is so important, not only because it helps you prepare better for those hard races that you really want to uh, perform well, but also if you think about it, it's really amazing because doing this does not require any additional time. It just requires some change of your mindset. It just requires some conscious thinking about it. It requires some tiny steps that you need to take, but it's not like, you know, additional training sessions. It's not hours that you need to spend on it. And compared to the effort that you have to put in to make it happen, I think that the benefits are just huge. And if you're not doing it, I think you're just wasting a huge opportunity that you have in front of you. And it's sometimes a little bit sad to see how 
athletes are putting a lot of effort and time into their training schedules, but not doing it in the right way, therefore not getting the best possible results out of it. And I think that implementing the things that I was talking about during this video is going to help you in that area tremendously. So if you think that this makes sense, try it. Try and see how it works out for you. Maybe it doesn't and you have to find a different way, but maybe it does and it will take you miles ahead or kilometers, right? Anyway, thanks a lot for listening. Uh, I hope this was useful and you've learned something from it. If you've liked this video, hit the like below it. Uh, you can also put the comment if you want to comment on something that we've talked about in this video. I'm always also looking forward to any kind of suggestions that you might have regarding the future topics, future talks. So just leave a comment. And if you're not subscribed yet, uh, then also hit the subscribe button so that you don't miss any videos in the future. Thanks a lot for watching and see you in the next one.